from cave paintings, to Renaissance masters, to street artists. Throughout history, painting has evoked our emotions with a wide palette of color. Vibrant blues, brilliant yellows, bright reds. When you're working with color in terms of paint, the possibilities can be endless. Riyad Mia teaches painting at the New York Studio School in Manhattan. He says that the color in paint comes from pigments, certain materials that have been crushed into a fine dust. Pigment can come from many materials around the world, plants, metals, even insects, and are characterized as either organic, meaning carbon-based, or inorganic, which is basically everything else. Some of the oldest paintings, dating back almost 40,000 years during the Paleolithic era, relied on natural pigments like ochre and umber, which contain inorganic material like iron oxides that provide red and brown colors. It's basically colors that would come directly from the earth. Do you recognize this painting? It's titled The Girl with a Pearl Earring by Vermeer. The beautiful blue color she's wearing comes from lapis lazuli, a mineral mined from deep within the mountains of Afghanistan. The pigment in the commercial market is called ultramarine. It's one of my favorite colors. Ultramarine blue, it's a very dark and intense blue. But with advances in technology and a greater understanding of chemistry, scientists have been able to help artists expand their color palette with inorganic pigments. Inorganic pigments tend to have a longer brilliance and they don't fade as much. Most inorganic pigments are actually ionic compounds, compounds composed of positive and negative ions. The positive ions in the ionic compounds that make up pigments are usually ions of transition metals. These transition metals are located in the middle of the periodic table, like copper, zinc, and manganese. The color of these metal ions are what gives paint its color. So, what other transition metals are found in paints? Sometimes, you just have to read the label on the paint tube. How about cobalt blue, or cadmium red, or titanium white? And that's not all. Zinc is used to make zinc yellow. Ever hear of vermilion? The deep red that was favored by the artist Titian was originally made with mercury. Lead was a common metal used in many paints in the past, but because of its toxicity, it's rarely used today. In his studio, Riyadh uses both organic and inorganic pigments in his work, like organic ivory black or inorganic manganese blue. The exciting thing about painting for me is really seeing what I don't know or arriving at a place that I haven't seen before. Now it's your turn to put ionic compounds to work. So roll up your sleeves, grab a paintbrush, and see what emotions you can evoke with color.